It is a common perception that water crisis in Pakistan is a distant threat. Contrary to it, we are facing a ticking time bomb where 200 million people in Pakistan are going to face extreme water starvation if we do not act now. The evidence of this is growing more and more with increasing water scarcity, resource depletion, and contaminations in different parts of the country. But surprisingly, this issue is not happening because we're running out of water, but because we're not able to manage and put value to our water resources. In fact, we have enough water in our nature that World Bank recently reported that only 35 countries in the world are more water abundant than Pakistan. Yet, our population is branded among those nations that are facing extreme water risk in the world, as you can see in the map. And to add to our vulnerability in managing our water resources, climate change is inducing pressures on our water systems through invariable rainfalls, droughts, and floods. Pakistan is ranked the fifth most vulnerable country in the world for climate change. The way climate change acts is that it creates an uncertainty. For example, too less water when it is needed can create droughts and food insecurity. Too much water in the form of floods and storms can devastate an entire population, as we saw back in 2010 when Pakistan faced severe floodings. Now, if you all think that this is just a one-off event and it's not going to incur again, well, Cape Town thought the same. And this is what happens when lack of, lack of planning and denial to issues uh, lead you towards. We saw Cape Town citizens lining up to secure water supplies for their households as their main water resource dried out. Now, understanding that this issue is real, three important questions that we need to ask ourselves are, how big is this issue? How quickly is it scaling up? And what should be our level of preparedness? Any delays in finding answers to these questions is only going to let this issue grow exponentially and keep us away from the solutions. But before I delve in more about finding answers to these questions, let me just take you through a little bit of background of some of the statistics that I, as a water manager working with WWF, kind of go through. Pakistan has about 250 billion cubic meters of water available. That's an approximate figure. To put it in context, we have about 250 trillion liters of water bottles with us. Now, out of this proportion, 90% of it goes to our agriculture sector, 4% goes to industries, while 6% is consumed by domestic users. If I put agriculture and industry aside for now and just try and dig into what our domestic consumption looks like, for 200 million people in Pakistan, 70% of them do not have access to clean drinking water. 80% do not have access to both clean drinking water and sanitation services, which leaves only about 20% of the population, that's about 40 million people in Pakistan, who, do not, who have access to clean drinking water and sanitation. Now, if I assume that this water is distributed equally, which it is not right now, our per capita availability is about 950 cubic meter per year, which is less than the 1,000 cubic meter threshold, which indicates a water stress. Now, you may ask that this is just a minor uh, difference. It doesn't make much difference. Well, it does indicate that we are amongst the water stress nation in the world. If I look at our storage capacities in Pakistan, we only have about 30 days of storage capacity for 200 million people. Contrary to it, India has about 220 days of storage capacity, while more advanced countries like, South, like US, Canada, and Australia have 1,000 plus days of skill, uh, uh, storage capacities. Now bear in mind, the minimum storage capacity that any country should have is 120 days, and we are four times less than that. Now the reason for me to be showing you these statistics is just not to, not to like, you know, bulge out all these numbers, but just to give you a perspective about, and just to give you, make you think that there's something wrong happening with the way we are managing our water resources. These are all indications that we are not doing something right. And on top of this, our agriculture and industrial water use is creating havocs 
For instance, we're supplying excessive amount of our agriculture water to plant water intensive crops, such as sugarcane and rice. And in our industries, we are pumping more and more water, in most cases unregulated, and putting less back into our system. For instance, all the sectors combined are pumping about 40 to 50 million acre feet of water from our groundwater resources, while putting back just 30 to 35 million acre feet, which is depleting our groundwater resources fast. Lahore, for instance, Lahore, for instance, is losing on average three to four feet of its groundwater every year because its main water reach, groundwater recharge sources are drying out. Karachi is facing a shortfall of 500 million gallons a day uh, as, a, as a city which is a 50 percent shortfall and you see more and more illegal hydrants on the streets. Islamabad too is not too far behind. Last year we saw an episode of dry Rawal Lake, one of the main sources of water supply for the city. More and more of these images are coming out as evidence from different villages and cities across Pakistan, only indicating that we, have, uh, we do not have enough water supplies to secure our cities. Even at micro levels, our water utility is highly inequitable. Our effluent communities are consuming 10 times the global average water use, while our poors are getting no water at all. For instance, our affluent communities consume 100 gallons a day, whereas the global average is 10 gallons a day. And this is not metered at all. In our households, we're seeing excessive water wastage in our kitchens, in our car parks, in our washrooms, and, in our, and all because we are not paying enough uh, to secure these water supplies. Now, just to bring back to my original question, what happens if we continue to operate at business as usual? Well, to begin with, our systems are going to start facing more and more external pressure, both natural and man-made. These pressures are continue, will grow enough to start making our system crumble and fail. And this is how a system failure might look like. And this is not a picture from some distant future. It is what's happening now. These system failures in the form of spillages and wastage are entering into our ecosystems. These e when, when they enter into our ecosystem, they are impacting back to us. And this is happening right now. The first to get impacted are our vulnerable communities, our poor communities, and the marginalized ones. But the reason affluents are secure for now is because they have the capacity to purchase water for a bit longer but that's not going to last for too long. Eventually, as this keeps growing, as our population sizes grow, we're going to see more and more food demands grow, leading to more pressure on our agricultural water demands, possibly causing um, food insecurity and price hikes in food commodities in the local markets. And, more, and what eventually will happen is that we'll see more and more episodes of water shortfall, waterborne diseases, more and more inaccessibility to sanitation, possible communal riots on water, at worst case scenario, a water emergency in the entire country, or at least in different parts of the country. So how do we go about in fixing this situation? Well, firstly, at the macro level, we must insist our governments to prioritize water resource management and through policy interventions. For instance, capping excessive groundwater abstraction, metering our commercial and our domestic water use, and putting a price on our commercial water use as well. Secondly, our governments must also prioritize increasing storage capacities. Both natural and man-made storages are required to at least meet the 120 day of storage requirement. Third, we must both the governments and citizens collectively start protecting our water ecosystems, our rivers, our lakes, our oceans, our small and large drains need regular cleanups 
and proper waste disposal. The evidence of this will be when we'll see small fishes swimming down these drains, which unfortunately is not happening right now. And lastly, and the most important one, we must recognize that water is not a free resource. It has a price that we must all acknowledge. For example, 30 years ago, we used to, or in my case, my parents used to open up their taps and drink water straight from there. Just because we did not pay enough for our utility services, and because our government did not pay attention in managing our services, our systems crumbled. 30 years down the road, we've ended up buying and paying more to the private bottling companies around us. I'd like to conclude by reinstating the fact that this crisis is a man-made crisis. It is not happening because of non-availability of water, but because of non-accessibility of it. And the only re way to resolve it is by putting a price on it and valuing at it as a resource. I'd like to leave you with an image of both hope and thought from Philippines, where a dirty drain was cleaned up in a span of five years. Just think, which of these images can you relate with Pakistan? Thank you very much. Thank you.